everybody's body is different, so everyone is going to have a different beta. Don't get hung up on other people's beta. Hey guys, this video was brought to you by Squarespace. Na, na, na. Oh my god, I haven't seen you in ages yet. Hello. How are you? I left my house. <laughs> It's been a long time. I know, I don't know how I did it actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here today to do something we haven't done in a while, which is a tutorial. Mm. And we're doing, I'd say, one of CN's expertise. Is that all right to say that? Yes, it's become a weird specialism. I, I don't know how, but apparently I've been told once I'm the person who's short but can do big moves. So what's the first technique you want to go through? Uh, so the most important thing is to remember that distance only makes sense relative to your own body length. What does that mean? So it's not, when you say something is far, that doesn't mean anything. It needs to be more like, I can reach it from this hole, or I can't reach it from this hole, uh, given my length. And I'm gonna talk you through the examples of it. Tip number one is know how far you can reach. Often, when you're climbing, things can feel really far, but actually it's a matter of perspective. So sometimes it's useful to step back and realize how far it actually is before you try a climb. Okay, so this is a fun exercise you can do with your friends. So you can pick a hole, say this white hole. How okay. far do you think you can reach holding this white hole? I think I can go from that white hole to maybe that wasp hole, yeah. So I think he can definitely go beyond the wasp oh, hole. Oh, interesting. Let's find out. Yeah. <laughs> so reach completely horizontally. There. There we go. That's how far you can reach. Yeah, so I can tickle the wire. <laughs> so yeah. So as you, like, I didn't, see, I didn't even know how far I could reach. So it's, it's actually quite good to measure objectively how far you can reach, I think. Measure it in three ways. Horizontal, vertical, including the tiptoe, and uh, Diagonal. So you can take a mental note of that by stepping back. It makes a huge difference for your perspective. And if you have a wall you climb at really regularly, you can use the size of the panels to help you remember how far you can reach. Awesome. So this thing we're gonna get into actual climbing techniques now? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Let's get on it. Hey guys, this video was brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace really help us out a lot. Every month they sponsor videos and they keeps this channel running. So they want me to tell you a few things and those things are that they have an online platform that makes it easy to make websites if you want to do that. You can have an online store if you want to do that. You can get a discount by using the code name Bouldering Boba if you want to do that, which I think you should. So, if you're looking to make a website this year, use the code name Bouldering Boba and get 10% off your first purchase. Remember, you don't need any coding experience or anything like that. Even an idiot like me can make a website. I can see that you're probably just trying to look at what's on my desk, but you should be paying attention to the deal that I'm trying to give you. So if you want that deal, check the link in the description. Click it, bing it, bong it, send it to the top. Use the code name Baldwin Bobat, 10% off. I can stop this ad now, get back to the video. Probably play with some stuff on my desk if you know what I'm talking about. What have you got for me today, Sien? Dun dun dun! Flagging! <laughs> Flagging! <laughs> Where you flag your foot makes a big difference. Okay, what do you mean? So like, if I flag my foot here, now, let's say this is my flagging foot, I'm gonna reach here. If I flag my foot there, I'm gonna reach there. <laughs> if you can't reach something, change where your foot is flagging, or your okay. leg is flagging, because it might change. Ah. And the second thing you do, instead of being having a passive flag, you can actually bend your leg and push against the wall. So this is a passive flag. Why is it passive? Because it's not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> what you can do is make it work for you. So what, what you did was you raised your foot, which allowed you to bend your knee, and then that bend gave you a little bit of extra push? Yeah. So, just being here means I'm increasing my reach because it doesn't have to be there anymore. And then also, you get the push. So you got this. Awesome. Yeah, so it's two wins. Well done. Think about it. So tired. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so tired from doing that. <laughs> you want active flying, babe. Yeah, I was just uh, dead leg. <laughs> okay, makeover. It's crazy because the difference in your foot looks very minimal, but mm -hmm. the difference in your climbing does not look minimal. Yeah, cool. All right, Sien, you've got another technique for us. What is it? <laughs> Straight on oh. your elbows. I thought you were going to tell us how to become a TikTok star. Like... Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, why do people not do that? Oh, right, yeah. Because it feels really exposed, you feel a little bit out of control, but I think it's mostly unfamiliarity. That is true. A lot of new people who climb, they like to clutch the holds really close to their chest, and as you're saying, basically the opposite of that. Let it go. Let, Let it, it go. go. Show us what you mean, and then discuss what you mean. Okay. <laughs> okay. straight on all of those uh, on all those overhanging bits. But yeah, but it's not just the arms, it's the legs and the hips as well. Oh, the hips? Yes, because when you're like this, you are very short. When you're like this, you're very tall. So would you say that means keep your hips close to the wall or just what is the rule of thumb you would say? Extend out, sometimes that's close to the wall, uh, but only when you're moving. So not all the time, but if you're trying to go far, that's usually a good shout. And um, before you fully straighten your limbs, like your arms and your legs, are you coiling up before and bending them a little bit more? Are you trying to wi wind up, yeah. is what you're saying? Yeah. Um, it depends on the context. So a lot of climbs, you're not going to have that option. Okay. So it's important to learn to straighten out, even if you're already quite stretched. Right. And also, if you coil up too much, it can be hard to straighten out. So it's actually more like a Goldilocks sweet spot. Okay, cool. Show us the not so sweet spot. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh! I don't think you even planned to do that. <laughs> no, I didn't. This is why you don't do like this climb. <laughs> I just tried to control it with my upper body. So the weight came off my leg and because of the angle, it was a bit tenuous. So then I just fell off. It sounds very complicated. Just remember, your whole body works together. Yeah. And when we look for control, we often shift the weight up here. So it's a false sense of control a lot of the time and you have to tune into your whole body. Damn girl, you're so wise. I think that's a lot for today. Cool. So let's start here. Stop here. All right, uh, guys. We're going to keep talking, but if you would like more in-depth stuff about this, please comment down below and also visit APSCoaching.co.uk .co.uk And uh, that's where Sien's working right now and she can give you some in-person climbing advice. But anyway, Sien has more to tell us and we're going to find out. Now. I have my own gym now for coaching. It's near Reading. So that's what this is. Check it out and let me know if you want to come for technique coaching.